Everybody, welcome back to the Pixelus. I'm Will, that's Blake, and Wizards of the Coast just responded finally to all this OGL drama that's been going on. Very quickly, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, OGL stands for Open Gaming License, and it's essentially this legal document that for the past 20 plus years has enabled uh, creators, both small and giant, to create their own tabletop, their own D&D content, and push it out there to even make money off of it. Um, it's part of what's made D&D so successful and have such a right. boon um, recently. But anyway, beside the point is that document has been the same for 20 years. It's what's led to everything, but they just uh, released a new version, or rather a new version leaked this past week that to caused a bunch of drama. With, right, and it's to go with their next version of D&D, one D&D, which is basically like a six, sixth edition kind of thing. Yeah, and just very simply, really quick, is all that does is that OGL basically gives people the right to some pieces of Wizards of the Coast IP so that they can push out that type of content. Um, and anyway, again, the new version of this leaked. Um, I'm going to let Blake tell you a bit more about kind of what yeah. in that new version caused such outrage, and then we'll dive into what Wizards finally <laughs> responded yeah so like will said just to like briefly touch on the ogl the reason there's been a lot of drama about this is because it's you've been pretty open to create D, &D content in the past which has been really great for all of us D, D lovers well the new ogl what it does is it basically divides you into a non-commercial creator and a commercial creator if you're a non-commercial creator all of the content you create, you're not allowed to charge any kind of money whatsoever, not a dollar, nor any kind of exchange of service, which they even mention having your brother do your chores for a week, which is such an odd line. But <laughs> you, you can't charge anything whatsoever when you release your content. Or if you're a commercial license, if you accept any form of payment, even $1, you are now part of the commercial licensure, where up to a certain amount of money, they listed $750,000, you would have to pay a royalty fee on your earnings between 20 to 25 percent now you may be someone who you're not earning that much money on your D, D content i hope you are but the other part of this this licensure content that was really upsetting to people was this line that basically said that while you create the content you do and while you own that content wizards of the coast has the basically forever right to take your content reproduce it and sell it and not pay you a single dime for it. <laughs> There's also a lot of ambiguous language in the contract where it's a little bit uncertain what it's going to look like for content creators. And in fact, it's already caused a lot of major third-party publishers to move on from explicit D&D &D content instead of focusing on fantasy style content. Now, like Will mentioned, they did finally respond to this document. There's been quite a bit of ire around it. Uh, yeah. Will, is there anything else we should talk about or should I just dive into this response? Yeah, I think we should just dive into the response and then we can kind of dissect it from there. Okay, so um, we're going to we're gonna pop up this response. This is actually, they published this through D&D &D Beyond, interestingly enough. Uh, and this was published literally just an hour ago. So we're reading this pretty fresh compared to you as well. So it says, when we initially conceived of revising the OGL, it was with three major goals in mind. First, we wanted the ability to prevent the use of D&D content from being included in hateful and discriminatory products. Not bad. I think we'd all agree with something like that. Yeah. Second, we wanted to address those attempting to use D&D in Web3, blockchain games, and NFTs by making clear that OGL content is limited to tabletop role-playing content like campaigns, modules, and supplements. And third, we wanted to ensure that the OGL is for the content creator, the home brewer, the aspiring designer, our players, and the community, not major corporations who want to use it for their own commercial and, promotion and promotional purposes. So driving these goals were two simple principles. One, our job is to be good stewards of the game. And two, the OGL exists for the benefit of the fans. Nothing about those principles have wavered for a second. That's why our early drafts of the new OGL included the provisions they did, which if you haven't looked at it, there was quite a bit of commentary on there to kind of sort of flesh out what some of the legal language meant. Uh, continuing, it says that draft language was provided to content creators and publishers so that their feedback could be considered before anything was finalized. In addition to language allowing us to address discriminatory and hateful content, 
uh, conduct and clarifying what types of products the, the OGL covers, our drafts inc included royalty language designed to apply to large corporations attempting to use OGL content. It was never our intent to impact the vast majority of the community, uh, which I think we'll have a response about that here in a yeah. second. Uh, however, it's clear from the reaction that we rolled a one. Yes, I would say so. It has become clear that it's no longer possible to fully achieve all three goals while staying true to our principles. So here's what we are doing. The, new, the next OGL, which by the way, they've mentioned they're releasing what they're calling 2.0 uh, this upcoming Monday, supposedly. But they say the next OGL will contain the provisions that allow us to protect and cultivate the inclusive environment we are trying to build and specify that it covers only content for tabletop RPGs. That means that other expressions such as educational and charitable campaigns, live streams, cosplays, virtual tabletop uses, etc. will main, remain unaffected by any OGL update. Content already released under 1.0a, that's the previous version of the OGL, will also remain unaffected. This is an important data point because in the new OGL, there was a line about how um, the licensure applied to your text, your printed content, and that everything else you created must be free. So this is an interesting distinction we'll talk about. Yeah. They also go on to say, what it will not contain is any royalty structure. It will also not include the license back provision that some people were afraid was a means for us to steal work. That's referencing the line about how they can basically take your content and sell it, do whatever they want with yeah, it. Have the rights uh, to it forever. Exactly. They're saying we were never meaning, we never meant to come across as wanting to steal your work. That thought never crossed our minds. Under any new OGL, you will own the content you create. We won't. Interestingly enough, that's also still the language in the old version. Um, any language we put down will be crystal clear and unequivocal on that point. The license back language was intended to protect us and our partners from creators who incorrectly allege that we steal their work simply because of coincidental similarities. As we continue to invest in the game that we love and move forward with partnerships in film, television, and digital games, that risk is simply too great to ignore. The new OGL will pro contain provisions to address that risk, but we will do it without a license back and without suggesting we have the rights to the content you create. Your ideas and imagination are what make this game special, and that belongs to you. Totally agree. Again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, a couple of last thoughts. This is really where they should have just ended it, by the way, but... <laughs> They continued. Uh, a couple of last thoughts. First, we won't be able to release the new OGL today because we need to make sure we get it right, but it is coming. Again, a follow-up leaked document says that uh, that's potentially coming as early as this, uh, this Monday. Uh, they go on to say, second, you're going to hear people say that they won and we lost because making your voices heard forced us to change our plans. Those people will only be half right. They won and so did we. Our plan okay. was always, yeah, this is, this is the worst thing. Our plan was always to solicit the input of our community before any update to the OGL. <laughs> we wanted this all along. <laughs> the drafts you've seen were attempting to do just that. We want to always delight fans and create experiences together that everyone loves. We realize we did not do that this time, and we're sorry for that. Our goal was to get exactly the type of feedback... Oh my gosh, this is so bad. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to keep the reactions out. Our goal was to get exactly the type of feedback on which provisions worked and which did not, which we ultimately got from you. Any change this major, uh, any change this major could have been done well if we were willing to take that feedback, no matter how it provided, how it was spreaded. So, so we are. Thank you for caring enough to let us know what works and what doesn't, what you need and what scares you. Without knowing that, we can't do our part to make the new OGL match our principles. Finally, we'd appreciate the chance to make this right. We love D and D's devoted players and the creators who take them on so many incredible adventures. We won't let you down. So that's what's in their response with a potential follow-up document there was a uh tiktok that went out uh, about an hour ago someone who claims they got a leaked uh add-on to this internally that says that 2.0 will be releasing on monday uh it mentions here there won't be royalty language in it but that person's leaked information says there will be a flat 20 percent royalty fee uh, and there's a little bit more in there as well we can talk about but should we what do you, you want to do you want to react to this thing or i i mean i guess yeah i <laughs> It's just, this has been such a crazy week. Now, if you're not watching this video, I'm sure you probably have been following along, but it's just hilarious that this is how they respond. Um, which, I mean, I guess it's to be expected that they would concede in these ways. They almost had to 
given everything that's been happening. But yeah, especially that last paragraph that you mentioned. It's just like, all right, you were like kind of doing the right things, but then it's like, now I don't, you're kind of being snarky about it almost. Yeah, this is what happens when, just from my own experience in business, this is what happens when you don't hire an actual PR company to write something like this. Like this is where you have someone who's like a middle manager or or maybe they're even like an executive who, uh, it wouldn't be a middle manager for something like this, but an executive who like thinks they can do everything and they're like, oh, I'll write the statement. And like they just needed to stop. At this line that says your ideas and imagination are what makes this game special and that belongs to you, it should have just stopped. That would have been hundred percent agreed. That would have been an awesome ending. It it alleviates the concerns that players have. Instead, there's this freaking weird. It's frankly petty, is what it is. Yep. And it's it's cringy. It's cringy, dishonest, and stupid. Where we both won. This is what we always wanted all along. And here's yeah. the deal: if this is what you wanted all along, what you would have done. Let's let's think about this honestly. If this is what you always would have wanted you would have publicly shared the OGL, not a leak, and you would have said, hey, guys, we want feedback on this. Mm -hmm. Like that, it's a no-brainer, right? And so like this whole beat around the bush, you gave us haha, exactly what we wanted. Like it is so petty and silly. It it really actually upsets me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they're trying so to save face, but it's like that yeah. ship sailed. Like it's, right. it's worse that you're trying to save face in this way. A hundred percent. It, um, well, and it, customer goodwill is such a tangible thing, and I don't know why people are so bad at like developing that with their customers. But I think of other other companies that have flubbed majorly, where the lead designer, CEO, whoever just says like, "Yep, we totally blew it. Sorry," and like that, just saying that gives you so much goodwill back. This whole other thing, this positioning, and frankly, it reminds me of that leaked document. Um, the, um, excuse me, up to cough, hang on. Excuse me. That leaked document that basically said that Hasbro sees, uh, D and D players as being more like obstacles to revenue than like actual, <laughs> what, what was it? Like something like yeah, that. It was, it was something like that. Yeah. Like this, this reminds me of a guy I talked to one time whose business was failing and we were talking about his business. And it was like all these things that obviously like people didn't like. And I was like, well, what's up with that? And he was like, well, if they don't like it, they can shop somewhere else. And I was like, they are shopping somewhere else. That's why you're bankrupt. Like, what are you talking? Like, this is what this <laughs> reminds me of is like, hey, don't forget this, guys. Like, don't forget you did not win. Like, we both won. It's like, come on, bro. Like, yeah. And it's it seems like, so again, if you haven't been privy to this this drama for the past week essentially you know this leaked people freaked out and we should talk more about kind of how like is it too late for them to even save face at this point because you know paizo the people that make pathfinder yesterday announced they're creating their own open game license that like is going to be i don't know the right legal term here but like they don't even own it it's going to be like independently owned by like a yeah. firm or something so like it'll never be messed with or whatever mm -hmm. and like that the the site like crashed because so many people were trying to like participate and contribute in that license so like is it too little too late at this point even but i feel like we only got this statement because of like you mentioned earlier there was a, a leaker from inside wizards of the coast that uh gave some information on this saying that like, you know, Hasbro only looks at customers as an obstacle to money. And like, if you want them to take notice of this outrage at all, what you have to do is hit them in the wallet. So cancel your D and D subscription, uh, right. D and D beyond subscription. And hilariously, uh, except not the freaking page, like crash, you couldn't for a time. I don't know when that or and if that think, got back up. And I think they even hid the, I think the thing that I saw was that they hid the link. They didn't hide it, but they ob obfuscated it. Like they right. moved it from a clear spot to somewhere else where they had to jump through extra hoops, um, which is so slimy. I mean, it's so corporatized and yeah, it's bad, but. So there, so was there, there was this big push yesterday, especially for like cancel your D and D beyond subscription. So it's funny that after that, now we do have an answer. Now I don't know if those are like concretely related, but it's kind of coincidental that once they did start getting hit in the wallet, they did finally put out a response. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I don't know. There's I guess there's a whole discussion here to to be had on if the OGL is if the new version is 
is fair and is basically you know similar to the one that has existed for the past 20 years that has enabled this community to flourish will people be like okay like what you did was was kind of shady but you didn't actually do it so let's continue to move forward or is everybody like no our goodwill with wizards is gone like we're moving to these new game licenses now i i don't want to be extremist but i think it's the latter i I have a really hard time seeing this undone and there's two reasons for that one um there there's too much of a corporate stink about this like and not to be a cynic but like having grown up in the time of like blizzard could do no wrong and now we know blizzard today versus 20 years ago like we've seen a lot of brands grow and become overly corporatized and frankly be very money grubbing and there was the statement that hasbro put out last month that basically said hey we feel like dnd is under monetized which made people kind of nervous it was like please don't touch my dnd <laughs> uh and not to mention also it's not just dnd this is happening with there's also it for you guys who are watching maybe you don't follow magic the gathering which is a basically a card game that um has massive fanfare been around for 20 plus years just like dnd uh, actually just did their 30 year anniversary the same thing's happening there where um you get less than what you paid for the quality of what you buy is no longer as valuable things feel very money grubbing and so i think because if this was an isolated incident i think there would be more goodwill to forgive and move on but i think trust is 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 irrevocably broken in that um if i'm if i'm cobalt press if i'm um you know, DMs Guild or whoever who create this large scale homebrew content, which by the way, if you guys listening, you may not realize how much homebrew content you actually use. There's actually a lot Mm. out there. And I would actually argue there is exponentially more homebrew content than there is official content that you may actually end up using. Yeah. But so seeing these content create, I'll call them creators, but organizations I, seeing them already saying like, "Hey, we're going to move to a more generalized fantasy style piece of content," I can't blame them at all. And I, if I'm them, I have absolutely no reason to ever go back to an explicitly D and D five E branded piece of content. Um, but I don't know. What do you think? No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm just. I mean, why risk it? You know, why risk it? Why just? I guess if you can adjust and use the what's like a blanket term here the the generalized non tied to the the aogl slash srd terms why wouldn't you like yeah my and again i'm speaking very like very vaguely here but like if it means i can't use the term goblin and i got to use something else but i never have to worry about this again then of course i'm doing that you know right and i think i think part of it also and I, again i'm trying not to be extremist but like you guys who are listening here like well, I mean, like, come on, is it really that big of a deal? It, it is a big deal in the sense of, like, we'll just give a great example of, like, Goblin. Like, you're not going to get sued by Wizard for using a Goblin in your book. But, like, where's the line between, well, is that is that Wizards of the Coast Goblin? Is that a generic Goblin? Like, how do you distinguish them? Like, how do you make sure that they're very clearly not related? As a creator, you're not wanting, you just want to create. You don't want to put in all that extra work to guard yourself legally from this silly, stupid stuff that Wizard has attached themselves to. So um, I think I think what people will do is they will create content and they'll put something like compatible with D&D or great for D&D. Um, but it'll also brilliantly loop in those Pathfinder players. Um, frankly, I don't know what other systems there are. I've, I've read of some alternatives, but I haven't indulged into, into it. But... Um, Honestly, it's kind of a shame, man. Like, I feel like D and D has had such a boon in the last five years, thanks to Critical Role, um, and it feels like being part of something. My apprehension is all these other systems. Although, you know, hats off to those systems for being able to grow during this time. It it it, it makes me bummed to feel like the community could be fractured because of this by people going to like you know the pathfinder subreddit or the dnd yeah. subreddit like and maybe there seems to be like a tabletop subreddit i don't know but yeah. i don't know it kind of bums me out for sure no me too man me too i definitely think this was a a, a forking point in the history of of tabletop rpgs and it, we're gonna go it's it's all new world now so yeah i 
it is sad, but um, hopefully in the grand scheme of things, it's for the best. I'm excited to watch this. Um, I wish I remembered the name of it, the new open game license that that that's not the name of it, but that document that the Paizo people are creating. Right. I think the acronym for it was ORC, like O-R-C, yeah. but I can't yeah. remember what it stood for. Um, so I'm excited to see how that develops and like who and what decides to start using that versus the OGL. And I'm also interested to see what critical role does now um a lot of people have been giving them kind of some criticism for not saying anything but to me that makes sense they probably have such they they've, they've done so much business with wizards and D, including releasing official stuff through them um so i'm sure they have lots of legalese in their contracts where they like can't say anything but now that maybe we're gonna get the official 2.0 released monday or whenever it is i bet they will be able to maybe say something i don't expect them to disparage them at all unless right. that relationship is ending um but i am just interested to see like moving forward what critical role does because we know in uh the legend of vox machina their amazon show they have um they have explicitly not been using the trademarked uh monsters and names that are owned by D D. Um, right. they've used the generic ones. So it seems like that's ultimately the direction they want to go, which would make sense for a company that big. Like, why do you want to be tied to any other entity? Just do your own thing. Um, but I think it's just something to keep an eye on. Very, I'm very curious to see, and maybe it doesn't happen for another year or two years or whatever, but mm -hmm. really interested to see where they shoot off. And if they maybe even join in with one of these open, these new open ones, or if they could even make their own, I mean, it would just be interesting to see. Right. It making their own is very interesting for how much clout they have in the right. tabletop space right now. I mean, they are literally the number one channel on Twitch, like literally the number one channel on Twitch. So that would be really interesting. I do. I would assume. I, I think the criticism's fair because Critical Role has always had kind of an indie feel of of the people kind of thing to it because you know it came from nothing. Um, right. So I think people are are fair and being frustrated that. You know, Matt Mercer or even like Brendan Lee Mulligan with Dimension 20 haven't said anything yet. But I, I think thinking practically, guys, there there is such an entrenched relationship there. D D Beyond gets mentioned in every episode. <clears throat> so definitely there is probably some wisdom in how they're navigating it. And maybe like you said, Will, maybe even some legalese there where they can't necessarily say anything. I do think that Wizards probably told them about something like this. Because I noticed, I think it was their most recent publication came through Darrington Press, their their own publishing um, company, mm -hmm. rather than Wizards of the Coast. I think it was like the previous two source books came through Wizards of the Coast, and the most recent one was Darrington Press. So, and if you watch Critical Role, you also know that Matt is brilliant at creating similarities that are also different. Um, so it's not anything new, but um, but yeah, I mean. I don't know. It, it, it will be interesting. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, I actually have kind of a crackpot theory on a direction the, the critical role might take, but that's that's not appropriate for this video because I don't want to spoil okay. campaign three <laughs> for anyone that's not watching it. But if you are sure. watching it and you're like, what is he talking about? Tune into our next episode of the podcast. The, the Apogee Solstice recreates the, the mechanics of yeah. the game. Yeah. <laughs> pretty funny yeah um yeah i don't know i mean uh, again not to like tread and maybe this this video has kind of gotten to the the point of like we've said everything we need to say but th there's it's so funny to me man like how stupid businesses are and there's i have no other way to say it i know it's like very, not very eloquent to say it but like you you have a gold mine in terms of content creation from your players the answer isn't let's rein that in and monetize it the answer is how do we collaboratively find a way to monetize that further mm -hmm. um and so you know if i'm if i'm wizards of the coast i'm creating content that it's like the uh the dm's book the dm's guide mm -hmm. um you know i'm taking inspiration not stealing i'm taking inspiration for content that's out there um i love the series the monsters know what they're doing by the way um and i apologize that i can't credit the author because i just can't off the top of my head can't remember it but like people love indulging in this stuff so I'm, if i'm wizards of the coast i i would be full you know full scale creating this stuff creating stuff that goes with your activities of like you know selling dice sets selling you know things like that but 
Um, I don't know. It's it's just such a bummer. And uh, like I said earlier, I just don't see this being walked back. Um, but hey, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe, you know, I think of like relatives that I have that are like super religious about like Dungeons and Dragons. That's the cult thing. Satanic so like, panic. Yeah, yeah, so to be like, oh, I'm playing Pathfinder. It's like, oh, cool. What's that? You yeah. <laughs> so I don't yeah. even realize that they're, you know, well, I don't, I don't play D and D, but I do play Pathfinder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe there's a silver lining. I don't know. So. Yeah. And yeah, it's just funny, like you said, like they're just so it was so stupid, right? Because they did this to make more money, and it's going to cost them more money than they could ever imagine. Like you know, this right. was the worst possible thing they could have done in order to increase their revenue. So it just seems yeah, like, like such <sighs> common sense. Yeah, and I, I honestly don't understand. Like this, this reeks of like Hasbro attorneys, and not anyone who actually enjoys D and D. Like stuff like this. Like people, we did, we redid the OGL to uh, address people using D and D and Web three blockchain games and NFTs. Like, sure, those are like cultural. Those things are present in today's world. But I'm also like, it's kind of like, it makes me think of like, um, like every employee takes their lunch break and one person is like 30 minutes late getting back. And so like management like takes away everyone's lunch break because of that one person. And you're kind of like, what the heck is this all about? Yeah. Like I personally, I don't know how much like blockchain and NFT style D and D content there is out there. And I'm almost wondering like, was there not a way to address that content without, yeah, Over like all in exactly you know, like exactly or even like hateful and discriminatory products like i i don't know how prevalent these things are and for how inclusive the dnd environment is which it's extremely inclusive it surprises me that wizards of the coast felt like there was enough momentum here where it's like you know, there's no like skinhead module and like some <laughs> attorney at Wizards of the Coast is like, we got to address this. It's the OGL. Like, I'm just like, I'm so confused by it. I'm like, yeah, I just, it just feels like corporate speak and and maybe I'm a cynic, but you know, whenever I read people being like, Hey, this was all for you. I wanted to take care of you. It, we, I just have a, I have a hard time. We both want to. You know, <laughs> y'all didn't, y'all won, I guess, but we won too. Yeah, yeah. You just did what we wanted you to do. <laughs> right. You fell for a trap. We got you. <laughs> I don't know. I got nothing else to say about it other than just, I'm bummed. I'm disappointed. I guess we'll see next week what the new OGL looks like. And um, I guess we'll go from there. So, yeah, we'll take a look at that supposedly coming Monday. And um, we'll probably make another video talking about that once it does come out. But yeah, what a what a saga. What a past week for those of you that have been keeping up with this. I'd love to hear from you in the comments what you thought um, just about everything, about this response, but also about the initial leaked document. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's all I got. If there's anything else you got. No, yeah. If you're just checking out the channel for the first time, by the way, we do a lot of D&D style contents, a lot of critical reaction contents. You can check out our videos there. Also talk about some Marvel stuff. And ironically enough, before the OGL, we were talking about a lot of like homebrew content we were going to put on the channel. <laughs> so it's kind of funny, the timing of it. Um, we might we'll have to check out that orc system. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, first time here. Thanks for checking us out, guys. And we hope to see you again. So bye, y'all.